Intel just released their brand new Core Ultra chips and said that this is the biggest shift in architecture in 40 years. So how does it compare to Apple's new M3 series of chips? Is it gonna finally come back on top and give Apple some much needed competition? Well, I really hope so. And unfortunately, a lot of the videos I saw were comparing it to the M2 lineup. So let's go ahead and compare it to the M3 as well as the M3 Pro in the binned 14 inch model and the unbinned version. Now we have 16 cores compared to eight with the Ultra 7 155H. And I have to say, couldn't they have thought of a simpler name? This is crazy. It has six performance cores, eight efficiency and two low power cores. And we will talk about battery life in just a bit. And under full load, it uses 28 watts in a slim 14 inch laptop compared to about 20 if we were comparing a similar form factor to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now it can use up to 65 watts of power if you unleash it in a thick and heavy laptop. And I have performance numbers for something that is thicker and heavier as well. But that is a lot of power that this chip can use. Now, of course, the M3 series uses three nanometer technology. It is ultra efficient. So it is a step above Intel's big jump with this new series of chips. In Geekbench Multicore, we have 12 12,300 compared to 12,000 for the M3. So it is beating it out. So that is quite impressive. But then in single core, we have 2,400 compared to 3,174. That is a difference of about 30%. So in terms of single core performance, it still cannot keep up. That is M1 performance in the original M1 MacBook Air that came out over three years ago. Now looking at 100% CPU load performance in Cinebench R23. Here we have 11,100 compared to 10,447 for the M3. So it is once again beating out the M3 chip in that $1,600 MacBook. And of course that M3 chip will also be coming out to the 13 inch MacBook Air for 1100 bucks and then the 15 inch MacBook Air as well. Now in Cinebench 2024, the tables flip and we have 607 compared to 710. Now this test just came out, it's really updated, it's a lot harder on the system and the MacBook chips actually are more efficient because it actually uses a newer process that is uh, more akin to what is happening now instead of a really outdated one. Now looking at performance per watt, we have 21.6 points per watt compared to 30 5.5. So we see a huge difference in terms of what you get for the power that is required to do this task. Now on Max Tech here, we often do tests where we'll unplug a laptop and we'll see if the performance stays the same and the latest Intel chips on lower power laptops have gotten better. So I suspect that this performance will stay. Now these new chips also have a built-in NPU for neural processing, just like Apple's neural engine. And I have some performance numbers for you. So this neural processor is now way better having a dedicated unit instead of just being done on the CPU. But compared to the M3, well, that is more than four times more powerful because Apple's been making these for a long time. They keep getting better. So even though it's good that they uh, put this for AI processing on the system, uh, it still is behind what Apple is doing. Now, as far as graphics, they have a huge update as well, double the performance for integrated graphics. But if we look at the compute tests in Geekbench, here we have about 30 30,000 compared to 47,700. That is a difference of about 58%. So that is still a really big difference. So I'm glad it got better, but once again, Apple has been doing these high powered integrated graphics for a while. So they do have the upper hand. Now, as far as gaming performance here, we see 28 FPS compared to 49 FPS. Now that is around 75% difference. So while you might be able to do some light gaming on that system, it's not going to be that great. Still, you're going to want to have dedicated graphics. And now let's talk battery life. This is a comparison to the ZenBook 14. And that thing has a 75 watt hour battery compared to 70 watt hour on the MacBook Pro. And for very heavy tasks, you can get four to five hours on that compared to six to seven 
on the MacBook. That right there is still a significant difference, but the Intel laptop is now about twice as good as it was before, way better. Now, if you are doing mixed uh, real world tasks, we're looking at six to eight hours compared to nine to 11. Now we have that broader range because it really depends on what you are doing. Uh, but once again, Apple has that three nanometer design and Mac OS is very efficient with how it uses the processor and those efficiency cores. And even though we have less, we have four efficiency cores compared to having eight and then two ultra efficiency cores, they are still better. Now, if you're doing very light tasks, we have nine to 10 hours compared to 13 to 15. So the new M3 chip in this 14 inch, it's very efficient and we have a larger battery than the Airs. So it actually just is amazing in terms of battery life. And that's not even in the low power mode that I often talk about that literally forces it to underclock and just sip battery. So as you guys see, this new chip has been really upgraded, but it is still behind what Apple is doing. And that is with the M3. So now let's take a look at the new black laptops with the M3 Pro. And the first I'm gonna compare it to is a 14 inch with the binned chip. So we have less performance cores, less graphics cores. And this is the laptop that you can buy for $19.99 from Apple. Here, I'm also comparing it to the 48 watt version of that chip in a thicker 16 inch laptop compared to 23. So that power difference is massive, more than double compared to that binned MacBook. And Geekbench, the score doesn't really change because it's not maxing out the CPU. And for the MacBook, we have 13,692 now. In Geekbench, the Intel didn't really change because we're not pushing the CPU to 100% constantly, while the MacBook did get quite a bit faster now because we have more performance cores. It's actually one more core in there. But in Cinebench 2024, the score did shoot up a lot. We have 876 compared to 896. Seven. That's because we're using 48 watts of power now compared to 28, way more power used. And that's because we can, we have a 16 inch with uh, big fans that are moving a lot of air there. But the M3 Pro does still beat it while only using 23 watts here. And in terms of performance per watt, we have 18.25 compared to 39 points per watt. That is more than double uh, compared to the Intel system. Now it is way better than before, but it is still not touching what you get in terms of battery life and um, the little amount of heat that is produced here. And in terms of graphics, we still have that 30,191, but now compared to 68,908. So that's literally more than double the graphics performance because we have more graphics cores built in. But I will add that if you're buying a 16 inch system, unless it's a very cheap one, you are gonna have dedicated graphics built in that do suck quite a bit more power, but they give you really good performance um, as long as you are plugged into the wall to get the maximum performance without it capping you. And now let's look at a 16 inch M3 Pro with the unbinned chip. Now I will say that the M3 Pro will perform the same no matter if you have it in a 16 inch or in a 14 inch. So you can save some money in size. You'll still get the same performance all while being unplugged. There is no difference. Here we have that same 48 watts used compared to 27 watts now for pushing the CPU to its limits because we have more cores. And in Geekbench, we have 12,362, still the same compared to 15,661. So that Geekbench score goes up by a lot when we unbin that chip and add more cores to it, even though it doesn't use that much more power. And Geekbench tests a bunch of different random tasks that are general to a variety of computing use. Now in Cinebench, we have 876 still compared to 1,010. So we have a really good lead now with the unbent M3 Pro, um, while it still uses way less power. So here we have 18.25 compared to 37.5. Four. So you still get about double the performance per the power that is used. And of course, with a 16 inch MacBook, we have a 100 watt hour battery, which is the largest that you can fly with legally. Um, so the battery life difference is even greater on a 16 inch with the M3 Pro. And even the 14 inch M3 Pro version actually has slightly larger battery 
than the regular M3 in a 14 inch. So there you guys go, those are the base performance numbers. But of course, when it comes down to real world tasks like we test on this channel, we go through a lot of different use cases. We're gonna see how that ends up happening because then you're using the RAM a lot more. Um, there's a lot more things that can come into play. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure you guys click that subscribe button right above. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.